So, we are delighted to be here with Anna Noakes today at the beautiful surroundings of Trinity Laban in Greenwich. Um, and as well as teaching at Trinity Laban, you've got a very varied performing career. Orchestras, chamber music, South American music, etc. <laughs> and um, I just wondered, what is, do you, do you have um, a favourite thing that you love to do or do you just like doing loads of different stuff? I always like doing the next thing. Whatever it is, I like doing the next thing. The future. The future. It's what the future holds. I like working closely with composers. That is my most favourite thing to do. Uh, working on new pieces, new compositions, the creation. Yes, right from the very, very, very beginning. Because you've worked with a lot of different composers, haven't I you? Have. Yeah. And I've had some really amazing pieces written. Wow. Yes, for oh, me. Nice. And. Uh, they will remain with me for all of my life. It's and it's my duty to play them. Yes. What a compliment. As well. A compliment? Something written for you. Well, especially, with, um, I suppose it has been because the pieces that have been written for me are so beautiful. And do you hear yourself in them? I do. do. You, you can I, hear that it's written for uh, you. Uh, 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 I know that um, they've taken the best bits of my playing yeah, and they've That's used it yeah, and moulded it into their pieces. That's been amazing. Wow. Yeah. And the other thing that I absolutely adore doing, if you're going to ask me. Well, I probably will, yeah. It's opera. <gasps> ah. It's opera. Yeah. Once I heard the singing voice, that was my inspiration and my epiphanal moment. Yeah. When I heard Callus for the first time. <gasps> oh. Yes, yeah. Did you see her live? No, I never saw her live. But my godmother, oh. my godmother was a Wagnerian soprano, Kirsten of Flagstad. And when I was brought up with her, I was brought up with her singing. And then when I heard Callis, um, who apparently was Kirsten's kind of mentor, then we I was. Worked they worked together. together. Wow. Yeah. Uh, when uh, I heard Callis, that was my inspirational moment. When I heard her breathing, when I heard her expression, and when I heard her diction and her overriding emotion for one aria, that's what gave me the inspiration for my flute play. That has kind of inspired my teaching, that everybody should have their own voice, yeah. they should have an individuality, they should have imagination, they should uh, work towards a performance that is entirely their own, their own thoughts go into it, helped by a teacher. But if a student really hasn't got imagination, I find that very difficult to work with. So that is why I absolutely adore teaching 14-year-olds. They can respond to any kind of idea, still really open, yet they haven't got fears and all the anxieties of being older. Yeah, they're full of feeling as well, aren't they? They're Fully probably yeah. in love for the first time. Yeah, yeah. the twenty. Yeah. 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 It's all very raw yes. and very raw, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Although I wouldn't want to be fourteen again, to be honest. No. It was a tough time. <laughs> I was going to be a heartbroken a lot. Yeah, but right during the circus when I was fourteen. I to be in the circus. Yes. Oh, yes. I yes. oh, practiced. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, my bareback riding was something else. I can tell you. Yes. Did, you do it? Did you do it? Oh, I fell off all, all the time. time. Oh, terrible. Were you actually in the circus? No, no. Okay, so <laughs> did you just like pretend? Listen, in my imagination. <laughs> it's a very, very good imagination. Um, wow. People who aspire to do something, flute playing, mm. kind of um, don't realise what a physical experience mm. it is. Mm. And a whole, and like singing, like operatic singing, the kind of physical nature of playing the flute, I think is very, very important. Yeah. Yes, because people mostly think of it as a neck up situation, yeah. don't they? Yeah, and, and it's kind of, uh, yes. they kind of very uncomfortable, kind yes. of stiff. Yes. Yeah. Sticks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And using the whole body mm -hmm. and using their diaphragm to articulate everything. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and, 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 and and the whole of their mouth and their vocal cords. Yes. To produce that kind of sound. Yeah. In your presence for like two minutes. Now I want to like get my flute out. Oh, yeah. I think we too. I'm a bit like. I think we're boring. I think I'm boring. I think we assess this. It's inspiring. Sometimes. 
the, the teachers who actually have had the most problems, yes, who have had to learn how they want to make that sound, are the best teachers because they've analysed every single little point in their mouth, their necks, their body, their core, yes, their, their shoulders, how their neck relates to their toes. I agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Exactly where the placement of the tongue should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for your mouth, for your individual mouth, nobody else is going to make a sound quite like you yeah, ever. I think, I think demonstrating in a lesson is great, but if you if you sort of say no more like this and just sort of play at somebody, and then you know they get that look of like I don't know how to do it though. You know you've got to yeah. explain, haven't you? And and very careful, and very important to explain very carefully and find a solution that's right for that that individual at that time. Not only that, find the repertoire that's going to inspire I was them. going to ask you about repertoire. Yes. Because I always think of you as knowing loads of repertoire. Do you? Yeah, I do. I've got this feeling. And have oh. lots of repertoire written as well. Yeah, exactly. Could you recommend some pieces that people might not know about? I'll put you on the spot. No, you haven't. No, <laughs> haven't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, this is quite way out there. That's okay. great. Okay. <laughs> okay. We like way out. Until I was older, I hadn't realised what an incredible musician Stockhausen was. Everybody thinks of him as um, a kind of minute scientist who had discovered a kind of way of writing that was totally imperceptible by mere mortals. Now, having spent a lot of time, yes, with my students, I have to say, analysing every tiny microsecond, I found it so inspiring. Wow. And then when we came to actually perform the piece, I was never so moved. Really? Oh. Yes. There's this piece by Stockhausen, and it's not just in quarter tones, it's in microtones. Wow. Um, and the title, uh, I call it Psi, it's called XI. And you're supposed to play it from memory, yes, in a bright white light with your eyes closed, and it is supposed to transport you into another time zone. You cannot oh, feel wow. time any longer. And it is actually a series of incredible glissanding, yes, and, uh, in both directions, and then some sustained, and then more glissanding. It's absolutely incredible. And by the time you've actually got into it, you're so moved. Time has really stopped still. It's Whoa. amazing. So the works of Stockhausen, I would say. Wow, brilliant. And uh, tell me about the vampires. Tell you about vampires. Yes. Yeah. Oh, please, can I? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was about 14 and a half, my mum one day came up to me and said, Anna, darling, I've got something to tell you. She said, your father, yes, who I had always assumed was the little gentleman who brought me up, um, was South American. And I met him uh, had a brief oh. love affair. Oh! Yes, and in fact, you have a little South American blood. I knew it, I knew it. The moment she said it, I had done nothing but listen to South American Indian music. Really? Yes, and then I found out That's amazing. that I had it in my blood. And had she, had she sort of encouraged you to listen to it, or had you literally no. just sorted no. it out? I, no, that's what I chose to listen to. Wow. And then. Um, I've always played South American music on my flute and then I was lucky enough to be a part of Ballet Rombert's tour when they were doing a piece by Christopher Bruce which was called Ghost Dances, uh, which was accompanied by uh, panpipes, canas, churangos, bombos. <laughs> and from that day on, I always wanted a band of my own. Wow. Yes. So we started one. Inca. So as much time as I can devote to that, yes, the band Inca, I devote to it, and the music is always incredibly happy. Do your students 
suffer from anxiety and so what's your advice? I'm going to start by saying that I think every sensitive, imaginative artist, performer, creator is going to suffer anxiety. Sometimes that level of anxiety can heighten your performance to degrees that you would never know that you could reach. And sometimes, unfortunately, it can go against and destroy what you've actually built up. So what I suggest, not only to myself, but all my students, is I have to practice being anxious. I'm always practicing being anxious inside. Yeah, of course, there's burning turmoil. Yes, I'm, I, I'm an artist. So I walk through the door and I, I, I can imagine that I'm walking into a plat onto a platform of 20,000 people. Yes, and I can make myself feel it's the performance. And so I practice performing. But there's something else that you're not saying, Anna. There is. <laughs> Just a little touch of body glitter. I always <laughs> use for every performance. Yeah, I choose to put it just beneath my eyes. And when I put it on, it makes me laugh. I think, God, what on earth do you look like? And somehow, just that little bit of laughter, just before I go on, makes me feel cool. I feel good about myself. Oh, and I go on to the floor. The flick. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't go so the happy course. dust. Yes. Yes. Happy dust. Yes. 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 Um, there are so many eager people desperate to go to music college. It would be wonderful actually to discuss what it is that 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 you as a teacher here would, would look for in a student that, that wants to study here. I'm looking for the most imaginative player with the most potential. Yeah. I'm looking for somebody who has something to say about the music, who feels the music extremely deeply and is able to put across what they're able to at this very, at this very moment in time. They're actually performing and generously giving me uh, their musical interpretation. If somebody is actually musical, that's really musical, imaginative and sensitive. I think that's my, my goal in selecting uh, students. Thank you very much Thank for you letting so us much. interview you today. It's been so inspiring. Has it? It has! It has. I want to get on the top. I know. <laughs>